And uh, when is Udhiya done? Udhiya must be done after Salatul Eid. Whoever sacrifices before Salatul Eid has not done a sacrifice. This is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whoever sacrificed an animal before praying Salatul Eid, that will not constitute the, the Eid Udhiyah. So, and it depends on your time zone and your prayer. So when do you pray Salatul Eid? Then you come back home and it should be done after. Now obviously, if you have sent your money elsewhere. In this case, a concession is given because you cannot dictate. And you even then try if you can do it, you know, according to your time zone. And the time begins from after Salat al-Eid, and that is the Sunnah time frame. And that is why Udhiyah is called Udhiyah because it is the time of Duha, the time of Salat al-Duha. And so that begins at that time, 10, 11, 12, uh, three days, and some scholars say 10, 11, 12, 13, four days uh, before the sunset. So it depends on which group you follow. But as we're all over culturally speaking, uh, pretty much everybody does it on the 10th, and it is definitely the most uh, blessed day to do it. And the 10th is called Yawm al-Nahar, the day of sacrifice, okay? It is called the day of sacrifice, and that is the day of Eid. And so uh, the sacrifice begins, as we said, from the time of Eid Salah, up until uh, Maghrib time, before Maghrib time, it has to be before Maghrib time, of either the 12th or the uh, 13th. But you are not allowed to, you are not allowed to, by unanimous consensus, sell any of that meat. Selling that meat means this is not adha. You cannot financially benefit from giving this meat. In fact, our Prophet says, forget about meat. You know what he said in our authentic hadith? He said, whoever sold the skin of the udhiyah has not done udhiyah, okay? If you were to sell the skin of the udhiyah, then you haven't done udhiyah. Because the purpose of udhiyah is gone. Udhiyah is for Allah Azza wa Jal, not for financial benefit, right? So if you wanted to do that, go open a business and do whatever you want to do, buy and sell livestock, that's completely halal. But for udhiyah, for qurbani, there cannot be any financial gain that you get or else the purpose of the qurbani is gone. In fact, so much so that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explicitly forbade to pay the butcher from the meat itself. Even though it's not actually money, but you're benefiting from the meat by paying. So you know, our process would sacrifice and then the butcher would come and cut it up, right? Because that would be, the, the expert will do it, you know, one-fifth the time. Uh, well, in my particular case, not one-fifth, but yeah, any one one-hundredth the time, okay, it will take me forever and I'd make a mess out of it because it requires a skill. The one who does this animal hundreds of times can do it in 15 minutes, right? And someone like myself who has only done a few animals in his whole life, it will take me many hours and bumbling up and messing up and whatnot. So, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he himself would call a butcher. He would do the qurbani, you know, the, the animal would, would yani, be killed in his hands وسلم, and then he would hand it over to the butcher, who would then cut it up and skin it and whatnot in a very quick manner. And he said that do not pay the butcher, do not pay uh, uh, the butcher with the wages of the of the animal itself. Pay him with money, no problem. You pay him with your own money out of your pocket, but do not give of the meat of the animal as a form of payment, subhanAllah. By the way, if you wanted to gift the butcher as a token of kindness, and then you paid him his full wages, that is completely halal, right? There's a Muslim butcher coming and he's helping you do that, and you pay him what his uh, wages, and then you say, oh Bismillah, take some as well, as a gift, complete, unconditional, that's halal. But you cannot pay the butcher because again, this goes back to the notion of benefiting financially from the uh, qurbani.